the topic is canonical representation of bandpass signal so these are some of the important questions which is asked in uh, video examination so first one is obtain the canonical representation of bandpass signal it is asked for six marks june july 2018 explain canonical representation of bandpass signal again the same question it is asked for eight marks december january to 2020 Third uh, question, consider a bandpass signal as soft T which is represented in terms of in-phase and quadrature components, suggest a suitable scheme for extracting the in-phase and quadrature components from the bandpass signal and reconstructing the bandpass signal from the in-phase and the quadrature component it is asked for 6 marks. Fourth question, express the bandpass signal as soft T in canonical form, also explain the scheme for deriving the in-phase and quadrature, quadrature components of bandpass signal as of t this asks for six marks so these are the few questions okay so today we will cover uh, the answer will be uh, from the following topic okay canonical representation of bandpass signal so before going on to the uh, canonical representation just we have to recall what we have studied in the last classes okay so we have started off with your hilbert transform that is x cap of t is equal to x of t convolution 1 by pi t so you will be getting when you take Fourier transform you are getting x cap of f is equal to x of f into minus j signum of f then we have seen the pre envelope that is uh, x plus of t and x minus of t conjugate right x plus of t is equal to x of t plus x cap of t similarly x minus of t is equal to x of t minus j into x cap of t so now today we will see the canonical representation so what is meant by canonical representation? Canonical representation stands or denotes the standard form or the unique representation. Okay, so you are going to derive the standard form of the bandpass signal. So you know that bandpass signal will be band limited to a particular band of frequencies, right? So just, uh, starting off with a time signal S of T is defined as a bandpass signal if its Fourier transform S of F exists only in a band of frequencies to the extent 2w centered about the frequency fc in the range fc minus w to fc plus w that is s of t when you take the fourier transform s of t uh, will give s of f if s of f is band limited bandwidth is equal to 2w that is band limited means it is called as narrow band signal and if bandwidth is greater than 2w it is band unlimited it is called as wide band signal okay so the narrow band signal uh, the signal bandwidth is less than or equal to the bandwidth of the critical band that is 2w will be less than less than equal to fc these are some of the important points okay as we have derived the equation in terms of x of t now we are going to proceed with the same notation x of t instead of s of t okay so the complex uh, starting off with the complex envelope so uh, what is the con complex envelope if x tilde of t represents the complex envelope so x tilde of t, uh, t is the representation of the co complex envelope of the signal then it can be associated with the pre envelope so what is your pre envelope x plus of t right so it, these two are associated that is so that is the complex envelope x tilde of t and your uh, pre envelope x plus of t is uh, related by the equation x plus of t that is your pre envelope is equal to x tilde of t into exponential j 2 pi f c t or x tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t so this is equation one very important relationship okay so for example let us see the explanation by means of the spectrum okay representation so if you take the figure a shows the amplitude spectrum of the bandpass signal x of t so you know that the amplitude spectrum of the bandpass signal x of t can the spectrum both in the positive and the negative cycle right so um, positive side you will be having the center frequency as fc and the range from fc minus w to fc plus w and this total is going to be your bandwidth right fc plus w minus fc uh, minus w which will give you 2w similarly in the negative uh, side you have the center frequency as minus fc and minus fc plus w to minus fc minus w is the range okay so when you take the amplitude spectrum of the pre envelope x plus of t we have seen the last session that the x plus of t that is the pre envelope uh, has only your positive frequency signal right spectrum will be present in the positive uh, side and the spectrum will be absent in the negative side so your x plus of f will be equal to center frequency fc ranges from fc minus w to fc plus w okay 
so this will be your spectrum of your pre envelope x plus of t now if you take the spectrum of your complex envelope so mainly you are going to deal with your original signal band pass signal x of t your pre envelope and your complex envelope complex envelope x tilde of t we can tell that it is frequency shifted towards your left side right so if this fc is uh, shifted to your left you will be getting it as and it is symmetrical so you will be getting it as uh, center as 0 and your width is minus w to plus w so is it looking like a low pass signal so now you can tell that the complex envelope of x tilde of t of a band pass signal x of t is a low pass signal so i can tell that your complex envelope is the low pass representation low pass signal okay so x tilde of t is equal to magnitude of x tilde of t is equal to x plus of f plus fc okay because it is only there in the positive side so in general the band pass signal x of t can be expressed in terms of complex envelope x tilde of t as now your band pass signal x of t can be represented in terms of complex envelope x tilde of t as what is the representation x of t is equal to the real part of x plus of t but you know already you know that what is x plus of t x plus of t is equal to x tilde of t into x exponential of uh, j to pi fct now you are going to substitute in in terms of your x plus of t so therefore what will be your x of t x of t will be equal to real part of instead of x plus of t you are going to substitute x tilde of t into e power or exponential of uh, j to pi fct okay so what is your x tilde of t it is the ca complex valued quantity which can be expressed as what is x tilde of t this x tilde of t that is your complex value can be also expressed in terms of your rectangular form or your cartesian form which is your combination of both your in phase and quadrature component okay so mainly there are three uh, conversion one is your um, three forms one is your cartesian form or your rectangular form another one is your polar form and the third one is your exponential form okay so here your x tilde of t or your complex valued quantity is expressed in terms of your rectangular form or your cartesian form as x i of t plus j into x q of t so you have two equations now equation 2 and equation 3 where x i of t and x q of t are both real valued low pass functions now you can use instead of x tilde of t can you uh, substitute this value x i of t plus j into x q of t now what you will be getting x of t is equal to real part of instead of x tilde of t you are going to substitute this value x i of t plus j into x q of t into exponential of j 2 pi f c t so instead of exponential j 2 pi f c t that is e power j 2 pi f c t you can substitute the formula right cos 2 pi f c t plus j sin 2 pi f c t so cos 2 pi f c t plus j sin 2 pi f c t now cross multiply it inside what you will be getting x i of t into cos 2 pi f c t x i of t into j into sin 2 pi f c t j into x q of t into cos 2 pi f c t j into x q of t into j into sin 2 pi f c t so what will be the value you are getting real part of x i of t into cos 2 pi f c t plus j into x i of t into sin 2 pi f c t plus you have j into x q of t into cos 2 pi f c t minus right j into j j square is equal to minus 1 so minus x q of t into sin 2 pi f c t okay so in this you know that there is a j component these two will be your imaginary part but what you require your x of t is only your real part so real part will be equal to x i of t into cos 2 pi f c t minus x q of t into sin 2 pi f c t so this will be your canonical or your standard form of your x of t so in this case your cos 2 pi f c t is your carrier in phase carrier and out of phase carrier quadrature carrier right sin 2 pi f c t so your x i of t into cos 2 pi f c t will be called as your in phase component and x q of t into sin 2 pi f c t will be uh, given as your or will be called as your quadrature component so this will be your representation your uh, canonical or standard form of x of t so next you are going to see extracting the in phase and quadrature components your input is going to be your band pass signal your output is going to be your in phase and quadrature component separately so the signal x i of t and x q of t are the low pass signal with band limited to minus w less than or equal to f less than or equal to w these signals can be derived from the band pass signal x of t so this is your block diagram so you are going to give the input as your 
X of T which is nothing but your bandpass signal which is given to a mixer. <coughs> the other input to the mixer will be your uh, carrier which is generated by means of a local oscillator. So cos 2 pi FCT. And you will be having a 90, what is quadrature component and in phase component, what, it has the same frequency and 90 degree out of phase, right? So you have a 90 degree minus 90 degree phase shifter which gives you sine 2 pi FCT and your uh, multiplication x of t mixer x of t into cos 2 pi FCT will go to your first part and your sine uh, 2 pi FCT into your x of t will go to your second half. So when it is passed through your low pass filter it passes only the low frequency signal and it eliminates the high frequency signal. So you will be getting the output as half into x i of t and here you will be getting minus half into x q of t which is nothing but your in phase and your quadrature component. So this gives the illustrating the method of obtaining the in phase and the quadrature components from your bandpass signal. Okay. So next is the phasor representation of the complex exponential e power j 2 pi f c t. So you know that the phasor diagram will be given by horizontal axis it is going to be a real axis and vertical you have the imaginary axis the amplitude is equal to 1 and rotation with respect to that of omega or 2 pi f c radians per second. So you know that this is your phasor representation of your e power j 2 pi f c t. The next is your uh, phasor uh, diagram of your complex envelope that is your x tilde of t you know that in Cartesian form it is equal to xi of t into j x q of t. So it can also be written in the polar form right r into angle theta where what will be your r by means of Pythagoras theorem xi square plus or your real square plus imaginary square xi square plus your xq square okay this is xq square and angle will be theta will be equal to tan inverse imaginary by real tan inverse x q divided by x i. So if you take your horizontal axis as your x i and your vertical axis as x q your amplitude is going to be x i square plus x q square y and this is 90 degree right because you are applying Pythagoras theorem so this angle is going to be 90 degree and and theta is equal to tan inverse b by a or tan inverse x q divided by x i okay. Next by means of this phasor diagram of your e power j 2 pi f c t and uh, your complex envelope you are going to draw the phasor diagram of your bandpass signal. So what is your bandpass signal? You know that bandpass signal x of t is equal to real part of x tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t. So multiplication of these two right. So when you multiply the two phasor diagram that is equation 2 you, you will get uh, e power j 2 pi f c t and for equation 3 it is x tilde of d. When you multiply these two phasor diagram you will be getting your phasor diagram of your bandpass signal. So when you multiply the two phasor diagram what will be your result? Result will be a complex envelope x tilde of d multiplied by exponential uh, j 2 pi f c t. When you multiply you are going to multiply the imaginary part and you are going to add the angle that is what you are going to do. So you are, you are going to multiply your r1 and r2. So what is your r1 and r2? In the first case it is 1 and in the second case it is root of xi square plus x, xq square right. So 1 into xi square plus xq square is equal to xi square plus xq square itself okay. And you are going to add the angles. One is your uh, theta 1 and the second one is your theta 2. So 2 pi fct and the second one is tan inverse xq divided by xi so rotation at 2 pi fc radians per second so moving on to the reconstruction of the bandpass signal x of t so now you have taken in the previous uh, you have uh, found out xi of t and xq of t right by means of in phase and quadrature combinant you are going to get your bandpass signal to so re so to reconstruct x of t from the in phase and quadrature components the method used is your linear modulation and mapping x of t from x i of t and q uh, x q of t okay known as pass band modulation so also you are going to use the same procedure x i of t will be given to the mixture which will be which will be your carrier cos 2 pi f c t generated by a local oscillator 90 degree phase shifter will be used to, to generate sine 2 pi f c t so x i of t into cos 2 pi f c t and x q of t into sine 2 pi f c t will be given to a, a summer so you will be getting x of t will be a combination of both so x of t will be equal to x i of t into cos 2 pi f so uh, 2 pi f c t minus x q of t into sine 2 pi f c t so this is your diagram for your re reconstruction of your bandpass signal now in the last you are going to study your hybrid uh, 
form of amplitude and angle modulation okay so for that you know that the cartesian form of uh, your complex envelope is given by cartesian it, uh, in the cartesian of the rectangular form it is given as xi of t plus x q of t right so x tilde of t is equal to xi of t plus j into x q of t in polar form how is it represented x tilde of t is equal to polar form is equal to amplitude or magnitude into angle theta right so it is represent magnitude is equal to root of x i square plus uh, x i square of t plus x q square of t and theta is equal to tan inverse x q of t and uh, x i of t okay so this is x q of t divided by x i of t now this x this can be written as x tilde of t is equal to a of t into e power j phi of t so it can also be written in terms of your exponential form as x tilde of t is equal to a of t into e power j phi of t where a of t will be equal to root of x i square of t plus x q square of t and phi of t will be equal to tan inverse again here it is x q of t and x i of t so based on this phasor representation the original bandpass signal x of t is defined as so what is your x of t already you know the formula x of t and your x tilde of t is related by x of t is equal to real part of x tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t so if i substitute this form what you will be getting instead of x tilde of d uh, x tilde of t you are substituting a of t into a of t into e power j phi of t into e power j 2 pi f c t so what will be your value real part of a of t into e power 2 pi f c t plus phi of t okay you can reconfigure in this way so what you will be getting x of t is equal to what will be a value real part of a of t into you are uh, substituting e power j 2 pi f c t plus phi of t formula so cos 2 pi f c t plus phi of t plus j sin 2 pi f c t plus phi of t so you can write x of t as a of t into real part right it is the real part so a of t into cos 2 pi f c t plus phi of t so this will be your eliminated or this will be your imaginary part so where a of t is equal to the natural envelope of a bandpass signal x of t and phi of t is its phase so this equation phi will represent the hybrid form of amplitude and angle modulation in fact it includes amplitude frequency and phase modulation as special cases okay so if the hybrid form of amplitude and angle modulation is asked then you can start with this cartesian form converting it into the two different forms and you can write it maybe it can be asked for four marks or six marks okay that's why this is included so finally you know that uh, what was your relationship between your pre envelope and your x tilde of t x plus of t is equal to x tilde of t into exponential j 2 pi f c t right so you are going to find out now from that x tilde of t x tilde of t will be equal to x plus of t into exponential there plus here it will become minus exponential of minus j 2 pi f c t so that is what given here instead of g you can write it as x so x plus of t you know that x tilde of t into exponential j 2 pi f c t so therefore if you want to find out x tilde of t you know that x plus of t into e power minus j 2 pi f c t so these are the important topics involved for these questions individually we will see the explanation of these questions in another video